Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. Um, don't ever, don't let anyone ever tell you. Don't let anyone ever tell you that uh, advertising doesn't work. Uh, one month of college football in, and I and I bought some Dr Pepper. It, and did I also buy Cheez Its? Yes, I did. No one's above the reach of advertising, I think, is my point. I don't always eat Cheez-Its and I don't always drink Dr. Pepper, but when I do, it's college football season. Well, not just that. We are finally get to talk about Buckeye football again with a week off here. It is time for another episode of Know Your Enemy. This time it is the Maryland Terps. And no, Jared, Terps. we're not going to do it a yearly thing where it's like, what is a Terp? Yeah, yeah no, that would be silly. Like, I know we, we I know we've like had a similar discussion every year um, and it almost feels like tradition at this point. But yeah, I don't want to talk about what's a Terp. I am curious, however, what's a Terrapin? Maryland is five and oh this year. <laughs> So here, here, here's the thing about Maryland. Here, it seems like the past few years here, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna double check here because you know we're we're very professionals and we yeah, yeah. look this up ahead of time. Oh, here. of course, every time, every time. Uh, so last year they were four and one in September. The year before that they were five and zero, oh. and then uh, 2020 happened. Yeah, yeah. So, are you yeah, saying they, are you saying they're September darlings? They are. They, they appear to be September Kyle. darlings. In 20, 2018, they were three and one going into um going into October. So here we are, Maryland five and zero oh here. I have a question for you, Kyle. Yes. Are terrapins? Am I, am I, am I supposed to turn this way and, yeah. and look at you like this? Sure. <laughs> are terrapins like bears? Do they hibernate? No. No. Well. I'm going to say no, maybe. Probably I not. I, I don't know many seafaring creatures that hibernate. But am I an expert in this field? No, I am not. No, no, but you can always you can always uh, ask Google. Yeah, but and apparently well, terrapins do hibernate. What? Guy, we we figured it out. Why 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 do the terrapins always start so well? Ooh. This is this is awesome from uh, Google's uh, generated generative AI. Yes, terrapins oh, hibernate Lord. in the winter when the water temperatures drop. They usually hibernate. Wait for it, Jared. From October Ooh. to February. <laughs> mm. God, that would have been genius if I had planned that. <laughs> Kyle, we officially had the what is a terrapin conversation. All right, let's let's get into you no know, the team that is the Terrapins here. Uh very very offensive powerhouse this year. Granite. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jared, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll Jared get to that. was very quick to say yes. No, 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 <laughs> yes, no, 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 no. Kyle. No, no let's, let's 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 pump them up first. Yeah. So 450 yards a game, averaging a lot. 38 point Averaging 38 points a game here. It's a lot. And de defense, defense here, only letting up 13 points a game, which I... It's a lot. Yes, you can, look, you can look at the competition, but, you know, they're only put... Okay, they're only putting up, allowing 13 points a game. That's... Yeah, that's that's pretty good. According that's pretty to darn my, good. According to one of my favorite uh, stat sites, sat... I'm going to try that again. Try it again, Stat... Here sites uh, which is teamrankings.com I, I pull a lot of info from teamrankings.com give them a plug they are a crucial part of every know your enemy um now they, they have it marked at 15 points per game because they don't count fcs wow. stats that it's true yes so i just want to say that there is a slight discrepancy in maybe some of your stats and my stats uh because uh they the maryland did play um who was it charlotte which is f oh Towson. yeah yeah charlotte's the 49ers we've had conversations about the charlotte <laughs> oh, yeah. 49ers before 
Um, we did, which ironic so enough was just, their uh, closest game of the year. Yes. Uh, fifth, so they have what it does that at 15 say about Michigan state or Indiana. So they have it at 38.8 points scored per game and 15 points allowed per game, which puts them at 10th and 17th in the country. On paper, it looks really good. Like a very, very top 10 team. And by the way, efficient too. points per play at point six, every play they run, they essentially get point six points. And if you're wondering, Jared, deserve, how but, the hell do I scale that? That's eighth in the country. That places them eighth in the country. And on the other side of that, the opponent's points per play point two, uh, which makes them 12th in the country. But that doesn't give them enough. Um, doesn't doesn't mean that they get to be ranked, even though they're undefeated with crazy stat numbers like this, though. They don't <laughs> get to maybe why that is here in a second. We're we're still in the pump up phase, Kyle. This is the part sure. of Know Your Enemy where, where we really gas up the enemy. We'll bring the right. hammer well, down later. We're still in the gas up phase now. All right. Well, let's talk about their quarterback, Baby Tua. We talked about Baby Tua. It seems like number of years now. He's what? what is he now? He's a he's on that J. He's on that JT Barrett plan. He's on that 2020 he plan. He is. Yes. He's averaging just shy of 300 yards a game, 13 touchdowns, three interceptions. You really shouldn't even year. be calling him baby at this point. He's an old man. No. <laughs> and I can't even say little because I don't know how if he's shorter he's or taller not, than his brother. Oh, I don't know. comparatively, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But Talia is, uh, I mean, again, if we're going purely on stats, he should be in the conversation with Penix um, and a bunch of the other like September Heismans. He's he's packing it on. Um, yeah, it, yeah no. as Kyle was saying, nearly 1500 yards on the season, 13 touchdowns already on the season. And Kyle impressively very impressively sacked only three times so far this season and uh, and a really the genuine compliment to maryland on this their offensive line and, and spoiler alert the competition hasn't been great but we're still in the gas up phase their offensive line should not be anywhere this good they lost three guys to the nfl and a fourth guy transferred to LSU. They yeah, only have they one with, returning offensive lineman. But here, here they are: the seniors, graduates, and one well, junior on this on this offensive line. Yeah, they got some help from the portal too. Uh, Ooh, yeah. But the point being, one that three of the guys just graduated, so maybe you assume that there was some seniority behind him. But yeah, it's um. Just, just shout out to the offensive line. That's all. Just like, yeah. It's, even if you bring in experienced guys to replace the other guys, it's still a brand new unit working together. And if you're wondering, Kyle, only three sacks given up, right? Mm -hmm. Quarterback sack percentage: the number of times the quarterback has been sacked per pass attempt. 0.73%. Jared, I don't know how to scale that. That is number one in the country. They are number one in the country and not giving up sacks. Uh, what he says, uh, one of my all-time favorite football players, Hall of Famer, was a Terrapin, played defensive tackle, and shared a Super Bowl MVP. Who is he? Um, shared a. It was he one of the guys who played for Dallas. Um, high tower. You... Yes. Ooh, I nailed it. There's not that many defensive tackles that won the MVP. So that helped. How many? Is he the only defensive tackle to ever win a Super Bowl MVP? <laughs> 
I had no idea it was a terrapin. Randy White. Oh, so it wasn't Hightower? Was it the was it was was it he and or are you saying he's the other one that won it? We'll figure that out. Um turnover statistics, Kyle. Maryland. Number one in the country in turnover margin. They are plus 2.3 turnovers per game. When a lot a lot of that comes from their their defense, who is a turn over machine they have I, I, I wish i'd looked here but lo looking at look at how many game. Inter yeah looking at how many interceptions they've the defense has taken away already a lot <laughs> a lot it's like seven i think it is something like that something crazy a crazy number already Yeah, uh, three takeaways per game, only 0.8 giveaways sorry, per game. Yeah, eight inter eight interceptions they've, uh, yeah, eight interceptions they've taken away and four fumbles. So twelve turnovers from this Maryland defense. Uh, I found the statistic real quick since you brought it up. Opponents and comparatively, comparatively, Ohio State has three interceptions and two fumble recovery so five 12 to five opponents interception thrown percentage number six in the country uh, to this point for every 20 passes thrown maryland's intercepted one of them well wow. It's actually slightly better than that. I rounded it down to 5%. It's actually 5.52%. All right, Kyle, are we done with the gas up phase? Um, rushing statistics? Not. Okay, they don't run the ball a lot, I think is probably. Is well, probably a, well, they, a notable thing here. Um, they're 98th they in the, the country ball. in the number of times they per, by percentage, how many times they've run the ball. Um, that being said, per rush, 5.2 yards a carry, placing them 18th in the country. They don't run the ball a lot, but uh, they make great use of it uh, when they do. No, they absolutely do. And, and looking on the defensive side, it's not not that bad either. They're. They're letting up only three three point three yards per carry on defense. So the defense isn't. Yeah, the defense is pretty good on the um, on the rush stop as well. Yeah, um, Austin says uh, I can't make it tonight, but I want to say what the fuck kind of mascot is a terrapin? You're a damn turtle, bro. Don't act like you're not a damn turtle. Like, she won't sleep with you if you call yourself a Terrapin little bro. I I concur. Also, too, is pretty good, K-Bye. I, I co-sign all of that. Um, now, the running back, uh, the, the rushing game is led by running back Roman Hemby. Uh, he, by himself, has 64 carries, 309 yards, and four touchdowns. The wide receiving crew, Kyle is pretty spectacular especially mm -hmm. if, in terms of distribution <laughs> oh yeah absolutely they're <laughs> their top three receivers uh deshaun jones 19 uh, ty filton 18 ken prather 18 and the combined of those receptions. three are seven yeah receptions and combined those are seven of the 13 touchdowns by by uh by baby tua but yeah, 318 oh, yards, 299 yards, 254 yards, two touchdowns, three touchdowns, two touchdowns. The distribution. Oh, excuse me, two touchdowns, three touchdowns, three touchdowns. Um, the distribution, as far as the the evenness of the distribution, is uh, just statistically impressive for five. Like, like, like five even throwing four, the tight end there. In? Throwing the tight end there, and that's eighteen yeah. to to Corey as well. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about the defense a little bit. Uh, Kyle's alluding to the interceptions. Tarheeb still is probably the leader on that defense. 
at least in terms of statistics to this point, 21 tackles, two tackles for a loss and three picks. Uh, pass rushing, uh, the sack leader on the team currently is Caleb Wheatland. Um, 20 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss and two and a half sacks. Now, Kyle, are they sufficiently gassed up? Have we gassed? Have, have we made them sound scary yet? It's, they have a diversified group of wide receivers, statistically one of the most impressive quarterbacks in the country. They don't turn the ball over. They cause so many turnovers. The defensive stats sound great. The offensive stats sound great. Or should we be scared of Maryland? If if Ohio State can't get the pressure on on the quarterback here, yeah, I I think Ohio State definitely should be should be concerned here. One one of the things statistically Ohio State's been lacking is the is the tackle for loss and sacks, and the way that you seen Maryland and what Jared alluded to earlier in this episode. Only let Maryland's only let up three sacks in all year, and they're get, they're giving the quarterback enough time to throw the ball, and he's already thrown for almost fifteen hundred yards. Yeah, I, th- I think Ohio definitely should be worried if they struggle trying to get to the quarterback in this game. Kyle, I disagree. All right, I, I'm not afraid of Maryland. I'm not afraid of Maryland right, cool. even a little bit. All right. All right, go and counter that. What 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 is it about Ohio State's defense? Do you feel co- no, 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 confident? No, no, no. Hold on. About? We're still talking about Maryland. This is an Ohio State. Right. Everyone knows about Ohio State's defense, which, by the way, is one of the best defenses in the country. Well, let me say this: this Maryland offense is not better than Notre Dame's offense. I don't care what the statistics say, from a talent standpoint. This is not a better offense. By the way, real real quick, offensive coordinators on this Maryland team, former Michigan offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis, uh, Mm -hmm. who helped completely revitalize the Michigan offense, and former Texas A&M head coach Kevin Sumlin. Big reason why that off the offense is really clicking right now. Big reason why that offense is really clicking right now are, are those two. All right, now, here's why I'm not afraid of Maryland. Kyle, do you have Maryland's schedule up in, in, in front of you? I do. Let's start at the beginning. Sure. We'll talk about money old Towson. Towson. Towson is currently a two and three FCS team. They are an FCS team who is currently two and three. This is a sub 500 FCS team. Next team, please. All right. Next team that they've played is the mighty 49ers of Charlotte. Aside from their name being absurd that a 49er would be in Charlotte. When the 49ers. We've had this literally gold miners who went west. We've had this discussion, Jared. I'm not done being mad about it. Now, aside I don't know from why having, you're mad about Charlotte, I uh, aside from the ridiculousness of the mascots uh, situation in Charlotte, their team also uh, sucks. At least they it's are, not a purple tiger. Forty eh. Niners of Col- it was a gold. A Forty Niners a gold rusher uh, by definition. Uh, Charlotte is currently winless against FBS teams. They have a single win and it is against an FCS school. All right. Next team, please. Virginia. Ofer. Future Big Ten Virginia. Maybe. And listen, if they <laughs> if they keep having winless seasons, which they're currently going for right now. Virginia has won zero football games. Next team, please. Next team here is the mighty Spartans. Michigan State. Uh, They are two and three. We're all aware of the dumpster fire that Michigan State is right now. 
And the two wins they have are against Central Michigan and the FCS Richmond Spiders. So zero wins against Power 5 teams. Yes. All right. Now that now you can compare. Now we can compare here, Jared. Now we can compare Maryland and Indiana and Ohio State and Indiana. Let's talk about Indiana for a second first. Just Indiana on their own merits. Indiana's only win is a two point victory over Akron. And their in state rival. Uh, excuse me, their only FBS win. There you go. <laughs> their only FBS win is a two point victory over Akron. They did put up a good fight against Louisville. We'll talk about Louisville in the Sloot Picks episode. Everyone tune in Friday for the Sloot Picks episode. Okay, so, so you can, I'll tell so you why Louisville we, sucks. So we have a comparison here. Ohio State, Indiana, 23 to 3. I, I don't. Maryland, 44, Indiana, 17. Those games happen five weeks apart. Uh, and Ohio State was treating it like spring game number two. I don't care. You can put up all the stats in the world when you're playing on rookie mode, which I'm sorry. This is may this is maybe the worst schedule I've seen in college football so far. I don't know. I mean, look at look at Michigan's no schedule. That's pretty no. bad. No. No. Jared. 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 Kyle. Jared. Bowling Green. Jared. Bowling Green. Jared. Michigan beat. Jared. Michigan beat Bowling Green. Yes. Jared. Answer my question. Are you looking at the schedule? Uh, what he says, looking at the numbers against Indiana, they gave up quite a few yards, Indiana. The strength of schedule is 133, what he says. Woody, what is that out of? I say, knowing, at least not 100% knowing, but pretty sure knowing what the answer to that question is. What he's typing. What he's typing. Kyle. It depends, but 156, he says. Uh, I think there's only about 135 teams in FBS right now. Um, I'm not sure where you're getting that because I'm seeing a the, co totally different strength of schedule. Well, different but... people calculate it differently. Point is, okay. Kyle, is that Bowling Green, which is a team that Michigan beat, would be 5-0 and against this schedule. All right. This is literally the worst schedule I've looked. I've been looking at a lot of schedules recently. This is the worst one I've seen. You have a sub 500 FCS team, a Charlotte teams that is yet to beat an FBS school, a Virginia team that is yet to beat anybody. Michigan State. And Indiana. Whose only FBS win is a two point win over Akron. This is bad. Rutgers would be 5-0 and against this schedule right now. They still wouldn't be ranked. Should they be? Like, I, I know I said it earlier this week. Man, why is it Maryland ranked? If Missouri can be ranked, why can't Maryland be ranked? <laughs> I looked at the good schedule. Argument. No, it's not. It's not a good yeah, argument. Because Towson, Charlotte, Virginia, Michigan State, and Indiana. South Dakota, MTSU, Memphis, Vanderbilt. Yeah. That's not a good schedule either. No, it's not. It's better okay. than this. Okay. It's, no, it's a very bad schedule. It's still better than Maryland's schedule. Listen, Missouri shouldn't be ranked either. They almost lost to MTSU. 
And they almost lost to Memphis. But at least Maryland is shutting out these teams. That's a fair point. But Memphis destroyed Michigan State, destroyed Indiana, the two uh, Power Five teams on here. God, Indiana and Michigan State are so lucky they just happened to be in the Big Ten already. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, so you mentioned a few uh, defensive players. I think their defensive backs is the the backbone of this defense. Like they, they're leading. If I if I remember looking at the stats earlier, they're leading defensive players in tackles are their defensive backs. Their linebackers aren't aren't that bad either. They're right behind um, Wheatland and uh, Hippolyte. Twenty tackles each there, and uh, a key a key name here I think to really keep an eye out for, especially as he uh, continues his collegiate career. True freshman Jordan Phillips uh, on their defensive line. He's already made some pretty good plays already as a as a true freshman. Uh, so I would definitely keep an eye on uh, Jordan Phillips there. Number eight, the uh, the big nose tackle. Oh, I Thousand. guess he's not. He's not. I, I apologize. He's not a true fresh. True freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. Heard. Kyle Townsend. What's that? Townsend. 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 Okay. I'm just saying, like, what, what? MTSU. I can, I can, I can do that, too. We're not talking about Missouri. We're talking about, if Ohio State was playing Missouri, I'd also be making fun of the schedule. I, I don't know why you've decided to enter Missouri into this conversation. Because they're ranked in Maryland's not. That, Who that's, cares? That's they, where this they, argument was they, going for. The AP's stupid. And whoever is ranked 23rd or whatever, it doesn't matter. And I don't care. That's true. I did find Maryland at 93rd on one site. I assume we're still still talking strength of schedule. I, I refuse to believe there are 40 schedules better than this. Whatever that site is, they're giving they're giving Maryland bonus points for playing two Big Ten teams by not factoring in how terrible those big two Big Ten teams are. Guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed. OK, Kyle, um, I think we sufficiently built up Maryland and then tore them back down. I think that was my goal. I think we did it. What do you think? Yes, sir. All right. Um, uh, I think I mentioned all of the stats I wanted to mention that I wanted to get to. Kyle, is it time to do our predictions? Yeah, let's let's get into our predictions here. So first first prediction here, Jared, Ohio State player to watch. I'm going JT to Um get pressure on the quarterback uh maryland as we've stated a couple times through this game or excuse me through this episode um only given up three sacks so far i think ohio state can match that in this game i think ohio state can match maryland's current sack total on the year that would be amazing that would be amazing to see ohio state do that here my player to watch here just because i think how much success Maryland has had on the rushing defensive side. I'm going to go with a high state player who's been playing very well this season. Maybe, maybe not getting enough uh, recognition that he really should be. I'm going to go with number two. I'm going to go with EE. I'm going to go with Ibuka in this one too, as a player to watch. We're still kind of up in the air about how, how healthy is Marvin Harrison mm -hmm. and Ibuka stepped right to the plate there, made some great catches against the Notre Dame game there. I'm going to go with I'm going with number two here. Sounds like a good call to me. Um, enemy player to watch. 
Uh, Kyle, I took the low hanging fruit on this one. I got tongue of viola. I totally just stepped all over that. I'm going to try it again. Tonga Vialoa. That was as good as I'm going to do. Who, um, who would have a harder time pronouncing last the last name? If you had somebody who's never heard of these, um, never heard of his last name and never heard of JT Tuamalau's last name, which one do you think someone would have the most difficult time pronouncing their last name? Um, I would say Tonga Vialoa. Um, cause like if you're, if you're an American, if you're an English speaker, like you're, you're gonna have a hard time getting past that tag. You know what I mean? Cause at least, at least with JT, you can, you can get right into two. Like you're an English speaker. I'm assuming you say a, a random person. We're going to assume this random person's an American. Um, you're at least going to get two. Two E. I feel like an English speaker can at least get the two E mo. Two E mo. Two E mo. You're going to get that far. Your average American English speaking person can get the two E mo. Now you look at tongue of viola, which I keep wanting to pronounce like it's an instrument, viola. Uh, <laughs> that's how i keep tripping on it via loa uh you're an american english speaker is immediately going to want to go to tag tago i to him allows more intuitive just trying to read it i think for oh, an enough. english speaker fair enough so i have my, opinions my enemy... on how why things are hard to pronounce <laughs> shockingly so my my enemy player to watch. I'm going to go on the defensive side there. I'm going to go with that Tahib Still, uh, the one of the leaders on that defensive backs there. Three interceptions for the year already. I'm, I'm going to go hawk. with that. I'm going to go with Tahib here. Yes, he is. Yeah, uh, number four. So if you're looking for a number, it's just number four. There you go. Key uh, matchup, Jared. Yeah. I got Tonga Vialoa versus the best in America versus the redubbed best in America, the Ohio State secondary. Um, mm. He's one of the best statistically to this point. One of the best quarterbacks in the country. Statistics can be deceiving. Uh, you know, Towson. <laughs> well, Indiana, Michigan State. Um, yeah, very, very similar. I'm going to go the other side. I'm going to go McCord yeah. versus Maryland's uh, defensive backs here. Yeah. Yeah, I just needed to like not pick the offensive line versus one of the offensive lines Again. versus one of the defensive lines for Again. the fifth straight week. Uh, Again. <laughs> yeah. Again. So I want I want a, I want a little different for me. All right, Kyle, All right. here we go. Uh, the spread, the spread pick, uh, the spread currently sitting at 18 and a half. That's at least where our CBS uh, site locked it in. Yeah, it was right at the right at the start of the week. It was 20 and a half and then quickly jumped down to 19 and a half. And then it settled down 18 and a half when CBS locked that in. And I'm curious if I'm trying to quickly look to see if that's moved at all and it is back up to 20. Hmm. Interesting. But we are but we are picking against 18 and a half here. Do you have Ohio State covering or do you have I, Maryland? I, I, I do. I got Ohio State winning and covering. This game is going to be a blowout. Uh, Maryland's not prepared for what's about to happen to them. They they're going from they're going from zero to 100 on this. Um, the Indian, uh, what he says, the Indiana quarterback threw for 200 yards. So McCord should light them up for 350. Um, this feels like a running back game to me. That's not to say that McCord won't also get his. Uh, but yeah, 
first time they cover this season book it is ohio state over against the against the spread is that what you're telling me it's actually a good question i have not looked i can look that up kyle what do you, who do you have against the spread Um, I'm going against the Buckeyes uh, once again here. I, I have Maryland covering, not by much though. I do have I do have, I have Ohio State winning, but I do have Ohio State winning by exactly 18, which does not cover the spread. And so, if they win by 18, I consider that a, a very very I, solid win. I I, I disagree. Um, right. By the way, Ohio State covered against Western Kentucky. And I have um, I have the final score of oh, Ohio State 40, 42 and Maryland 24. And also the Youngstown State game wasn't put on the board. So they're one for two against the spread. So it's not that bad. But Western Agreed. Kentucky, it's it's against the spread. There is no but Western Kentucky. It's against the spread. That's factored into the spread. Um, final score prediction. Uh, actually, before I do the final score prediction, our guest picker this week is a longtime community member. And uh, moderator in our Discord, he goes by the name Gangland in the Discord. Uh, he's a guest picker. He says Maryland covers Judas. I'm surrounded by Judai. Judases. Uh, all of state said uh, they moved on, but I think we might start slow and dominate later in the game. You know, Kyle, we're. Weren't you the one that shared the stat? I believe it was from 11 Warriors about Ohio State games coming off of their bye week. Mm -hmm. or I did. I did. In, in weren't they insanely recent. dominant coming off of bye weeks in recent years? Mm -hmm. They are. Okay. They absolutely are. Uh, I feel great about this pick. I'm not going to lie. I feel great about this pick. You Judases picking Maryland. You remember what the score was last last year against Maryland? I don't care. That defense sucked. This defense doesn't. <laughs> that defense sucked. This defense doesn't. Tell me I'm wrong. Ohio State won last year for those that do not remember. Ohio State won 43 to 30. So do you think it's going to be like last year where it's 43 to 30 or back in Columbus two years ago where the final score was a 66 to 17 game? I'm going to shave a couple points off of the 66 to 17 and say it's 56 to 13. Maryland has no idea what's coming. As is tradition. As is tradition. Can we get some nices in the chat, please? Uh, no idea what's coming for them. They, I mean, they probably have some idea what's coming for them, but they're not prepared for it. Uh, they've played actually nobody. They have played actually, literally, not literally, but actually nobody. They, they, they they're, they're unprepared for what's coming. How many times has Maryland beat Ohio State historically? I'm going to say never. You are correct. I mean, you could have been like, well, in 1942, well, probably not 1942, in 1948, <laughs> people were doing other things in 1942. Um, Rutgers has a win, though. When was that? That, that has to be like an 1800s number. Mm -mm. No, Husty has never, never lost to Rutgers. Liar. You, you, you've been exposed. You've been exposed, Zach. Everyone, get him. Get Zach. Get him.
<laughs> shit poster. <laughs> I'm looking at the stats right now. Ohio State is on a nine game winning streak against Rutgers. I've only played nine times. It feels like Rutgers has been in the Big Ten at least 15, 12 years at this point. No, just nine. <laughs> All right, they, 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 we've been just kicking them for so many years now. It feels like we've been doing it forever. All right, Kyle, yeah. um, that's we've given our final scores, so we will finish this show out like we like to finish out. Know your enemy with Austin's over unders. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. So he has here first one, little Tua total yards. At 267 and a half. And that seems low. That seems low. He is averaging uh, just under 300 yards a game in the air. And not, not that much on the ground. He's averaging about, what is that? Uh, 13 yards a game. Something like that on, on the ground. So... I'm going to go over just because if if Maryland's going to be in this game, it's got to come from his arm here to and if he does well and if the reason Maryland is in this game because he's throwing it all over the place and Ohio State doesn't have the pressure on him that they hope to have. So I'm going to go over with this one. I'm tempted to go over only because I, I think there'll be plenty of cheap yards late. I think that's my big hesitation here. Um, but I'm going to go under. Okay. So he has Williams slash Hall total tackles at six and a half. Um, that's a lot for defensive tackles for a team it, it that is. doesn't run a lot. I'm going to go under. Yeah, same here. Yeah, if they get if they combine six and a half, that means they're getting to the quarterback. <laughs> Probably. Or Maryland just said, hey, what if we just run the ball on them a lot? Yeah. All right, next one here is my Ohio State player to watch, Ibuka. Receiving yards at 82 and a half over. I'm Yeah, I'm going to go over as well, especially Marvin Harrison's health being, let's just say, a concern. Um, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it. I feel like going over here is probably smart. And he has here. Next one is their two of their two of their main running backs, Hemby and Littleton. Didn't talk much about um, Antoine uh, Littleton. Uh, combining of twenty-two and a half touches, which that is. It seems very high, so I'm just doing a quick calculator right now. They are averaging 20 touches per game combined, and I'm going to go under just a lot with our theme of Maryland going to be passing the ball a lot. So I'm going to go are under. You, are either one. of them heavy reception guys since you have the stats up? That is a good point. That is a very good point. Did your did Hamby, your numbers Hamby, factor? Hem, nope, it doesn't. It well, does touches. not. So, yeah, yeah you, you are right. You are right. So if I if I add in twelve touches for MB, and that is it. So then, if I divide by that, hmm. I wonder where that 22 and a half came from. <laughs> we figured him out, Kyle. We figured out his uh, his scheme here, but I'm still going under. I'm going under, too, only because Maryland's probably just going to have a lot less time of possession than they're accustomed to having, uh, mm -hmm. which just means less overall touches all around. Yep. 
E squared took me a second, Woody, to realize what you wrote there. E squared goes for 100 plus. I agree. Ohio State team sacks at two and a half. Unless they can prove me wrong, I'm going under. I know, I know, I, I know I made the prediction earlier and said that Ohio State could match well, Maryland sack. Put your money where their mouth is, Jared. Put your money where I said, your mouth is. I said that they could, not that they put would. Your money, put your mouth. Don't tell me where to put my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm going to go under. I said they could match the sack total, not that they would. Again, Maryland's only given up three sacks all year. The likelihood that there's going to be three sacks in this game is pretty low for Ohio State. I, I think two is still uh, a, a good number for them. Again, it's not necessarily about getting sacks. It's about keeping uh, Talia off balance and uncomfortable it's not it's not all about getting sacks. Stover at four and a half catches. Hmm, I'm going to guess that's what his average is per game. Hmm. Hmm. It feels high. It feels high for it his is. average to be that. Um, I, th I think one of his games had well, actually. Actually, he's had. Hmm. Actually, he's had more. That's weird. The, the stat I'm looking at here, it's only showing him for three games. It's not looking at the I'm going to have to pull up a different site here. You you, you, you tell me, Jared, if you got under or over this one. Uh, I it's a great number. I think if it was three and a half, I'd have said over. Um. At four and a half, I think I'm going to say under. I think I think three catches or excuse me, I think four catches um, is is the correct answer. I think that's what I would project him at is four catches. So great number by Austin. Uh, if it was three and a half, I'd say over, but it says four and a half. So I'm going to say under. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go under as well. Uh, is yeah, it just seems pretty high here as I'm still trying to pull up here. Yeah, everywhere I'm going, it's not including the Did he... FCS uh, game. Uh, what's his average? My Did he get a catch in that game? Maybe that's oh, why. That's actually a good point. Yeah, he may not have a catch, actually. That's probably why he doesn't have it. But what's his that, average for the other games? So if I'm okay, get, okay, yeah, he had no catches against. Um, there you go, against Youngstown State. So okay, uh, seventeen. So he's had seventeen catches in four games, which is right there at four and a half. Yeah, four point two five, if you want to be exact. Hmm, and that over under sitting there at four point five. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So the games that he's had a, had at least a catch, five, five, and seven. But the, that that over is really dragging the average down, though, huh? Yeah, but you you can you can sway and say, well, if he's got a catch, he's got five at least. Sure, that that makes total sense mathematically. Yeah. All right, and his last one here that makes total sense, Jared. Henderson and Pryor rushing you. <laughs> one, one, one day, Austin. One day. Uh, At 113 and a half. Over. I feel like this is a Henderson game. I feel much better if it was like scrimmage yards. I'll tell you that much. Because I. This so, so feels, the stat, this feels the stats like. Are very this feels the like a very good game for like a screen or a, a swing or a wheel to the running back in a big play. Um, yeah, the the stats are very misleading here because I mean, Ohio State's been using a bunch of running backs the first three right. games of the year, and then they started heavily utilizing him against Notre Dame, where he had 14 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown in that game, 7.4 yards per carry. So I, I really want to say over. I really do, but 
I, I think I think in this game we're gonna see more running backs get get their fair share of carries. So I'm gonna go under. That's fair. So are you going over, Jared? I said over, yes. You did say over, okay. And those are all the questions from Austin's over-unders. Awesome, awesome. All right, uh, Kyle, we're running long, so I just want to encourage everyone to join the Discord server, discord.thesleepcast.com. Um, it looks like we're doing yet another evening game for the uh, social screen. We all get together, talk shit, and watch football. Um I, it's looking like we'll be doing that at seven o'clock on Saturday night, unless the voting swings wildly between now and then. But that does appear to be the the leading vote getter in the in the current poll. So come hang out. We will not be watching any game in particular. I probably should say legally. Where's Esquire when I need him? Because uh, I'm not advertising that we're watching any particular uh, specific game. Because I probably can't do that. But uh, we will just be watching football as a concept and talking a lot of shit. We're talking <laughs> a lot of shit. Uh, so, yeah, come join the Discord server. If you, anyone can join in on the social screen, uh, you do have to be at least a $3 patron, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com to have uh, voice privileges in that room. But uh, literally anyone can watch and listen along. Uh, who's in the Discord server, obviously. So, uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Ooh, I didn't get anything lined up. <laughs> I Fail. didn't get anything lined up. Failure. I know. Yeah. We're, know. we're running long. We can just sort of move on if you got nothing. Um, For those who haven't heard, uh, not this weekend's game, but the following one. If you're wanting to watch the Buckeyes, you have to watch it on the Peacock. Can you say that? I'm sorry. Peacock is just such a dirty sounding word. How 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 are we allowed to continue to use the word Peacock? The basketball basketball team's got five games on the Peacock as well. I'm going to have to ask you to stop saying Peacock. No one watches the Peacock. Why play? Why are we watching games on the Peacock? Nobody watches games on the Peacock, Jared. Do you have a subscription to the Peacock? Lots lots of people watch Peacock, Kyle. (laughs) That's where the office is. Um, Listen, I probably can't legally say. um, Then don't, Jared. (laughs) <laughs> I'm just going to say that sometimes we watch college football games in the Discord server. And that sometimes the Ohio State game is hard to watch. And those are two completely separate thoughts. Those are separate, unrelated thoughts that I just happen to say back to back. I don't know why Siri thought I was talking to her. Uh, all right. Two unrelated thoughts. Um, so by the way, do they Peacock, uh, is a subscription service. Do they have commercials on the subscription service? Are there TV timeouts if a game is on, is on Peacock? Because I'd really like to see how fast a game, um, actually goes without commercials getting in the way. To prove a point to no one in particular. What he says, yes, uh, of course, of course, there's commercials. They couldn't let us know how fast a game could actually go by without commercials. They, that's just mm-hmm. information that they can't let us have. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by the sidekicks. The sidekicks are out of Cleveland. If it's not Cleveland. It's Akron. But I think it's Cleveland. Uh, definitely in the Northeast. Uh, so, uh, yeah, once again, they are called, uh, the sidekicks. They're not called the peacocks. They're called the sidekicks. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the sidekicks.